Man. So what's their most uh, well-known and classic album called? Dark Side of the Moon. What about you? Dark Side of the Moon, Dre? No, uh, I think it was Abbey Road. Oh. I'm pretty I'd, sure. I'd no, I mean, obviously. But, it wasn't but, obviously. Obviously. I'm not asking. It's just what is it? Dark Side of the Moon is the way I'm showing you. Like that on the cassette version. And on this here, here's a re-release of the album. Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. But evidently, it's always been the dark side of the moon. Uh, I don't know if that's just a misremembered. Or it seems hmm. a weird detail. It's so what? much. No. Wait, wait, no. wait. That, Im- that image doesn't look very official, but that one does. Okay, I that one looks very official. look up official. your things. Jesus. And it's I have my been... record collection sitting five feet away from me. I can literally grab it right now and look at it. Well, grab it. All right, I'm so, grabbing it. I've tried with Pink Floyd, but, um, oh, you know, God. let's give Rob Sec to find his album. So what I just grabbed was I have the momentary lapse of reason uh, like CD set here. I'm going to pull out. Let's see. What is Dark Side? All right. So Dark Side of the Moon right here. And what does it say inside the box? It says the Dark Side of the Moon inside, of the, inside the CD case. All right. Well, there you go. Rob, Rob, testament live on the program. Great job. You proved it that you didn't know. You're from the correct <laughs> dimension. <laughs> All right. You know, a lot of these are just weird things that could not be remembered right, like not putting the on Dark Side of the Moon or a one letter wrong embarrassing or something. But yeah. there's – I want to move on to one that's really freaked my being recently. Um, you guys – are you guys old enough to remember Publishers Clearing House Sweepstakes? Uh, I remember the commercials being on, yeah. Okay, and who do you know from those commercials? Um, the dude and the dude with the white hair wearing yeah, a suit Mc... with balloons. Ed, Ed, Ed McMahon, Ed? of course. I just course, remember Ed. Yeah. We all know. We all know Ed McMahon. He, you know, he was the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson sidekick, and he was well known as the spokesman who delivered large checks to people's houses. Well, apparently, Ed has no affiliation with Publishers Clearinghouse. And what do you he mean, no asked... affiliation? No. 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 Now, I want to say, there is a lot of what we like to call residue that he did, Ugh. in fact, have something to do with handing out big checks for Publishers Clearinghouse. All right, this makes no sense. I have memory of this, okay? So here's Johnny Carson himself appearing on The David Letterman Show. Let's hear it. Our uh, next guest is one of the uh, members of the uh, cast of the television program over there. <laughs> I have to apologize. I thought this was the Joe Franklin studio. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you why I'm here. I happen to be in town over uh, doing some stuff for the NBC affiliate. That's right. And, you know, Ed McMahon, our good friend, could not be here. Yeah. But it seems, David, that you are the $1 million winner. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, hey, hey. <laughs> I won a million dollars. <laughs> Sweepstakes. The, the odds are astronomical. Yeah. <laughs> well, geez, <laughs> screw GE then. Huh? Isn't that nice? <laughs> Ed, Ed would have been here, but he's in Hawaii with some uh, member of the female species. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, we're not quite, it's hard to keep track of Ed. We, yeah, yeah. We're trying to get the McMahon law passed in California where there's a seven day waiting period before you purchase an engagement ring. <laughs> <laughs> What a tawdry thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay, so what, what a tawdry thing to do. Carson rules, but in this clip, he's handing Dave a big check that clearly says Publishers Clearinghouse on it, and it's a direct reference to what most people remember, uh, that Ed McMahon was going around handing out big-ass checks to people. That's what everyone remembers, right? Yeah. Publishers Clearinghouse, the house that makes dreams come true. So here's a little here's a little more evidence. Now, uh, do you guys want to hear Ed McMahon rap? <laughs> oh, Definitely. Absolutely. Yo, bust it. 
Shout out to my people. This is Ed McMahon, rolling slow through the suburbs in an unmarked van. I ran the strip in the 80s, brought big fat checks to the ladies. When I showed up at their door, they would start screaming like crazy. Raked it in hand over fist, was on the VIP list. I was a verbal gunslinger, and my shots never missed. But now the bills have come due, and my credit scores whack. So I'm hitting up the winners to get my checks back. <laughs> Hi, Ed McMahon. Ed McMahon. Remember, I gave you that big check. I'd like to have that check back. If you, I, I'm having some stuff with help a lot. Just a little bit. Wow! Great rap. <laughs> great rap. So. So if he if he never gave out checks, and why does that song exist? Why is he talking about being in what the, was the Publishers Clearinghouse? I'll explain a little if you don't remember what Publishers Clearinghouse was, kids. It was a, uh, it was like if you would get these certain magazine subscriptions or something. It was this company that sent out mailers, and you would be entered in like a sweepstakes where you could win a million dollars, right? It was a big deal. They'd show up at your door. You'd be on TV. They'd hand you the big check. I remember this. I remember being like – very aware of this as a kid because I had a, uh, an elderly relative who was going through some dementia and like really got very OCD about publishers clearing house in general. So I remember they had envelopes that came in the mail with Ed McMahon's uh, a little drawing of Ed McMahon on it, and he was in the commercials. But evidently, this never happened. It's I don't. Do yes, you guys? I'm remember- having a hard time with this, Russ. I'm really having a hard time with this one. Yeah, it's weird. I'm gonna let it. Let's let it get a little weirder. See, even the Obama administration made reference to these advertising, according to Michael Gunrald's recent book, The New New Deal. Former Obama chief of staff and Chicago mayor, well, not anymore, Rob Emanuel, maybe so, <laughs> uh, argues that a stimulus bill is, quote, denying ourselves an Ed McMahon moment, the grateful squeal of publishers clearinghouse pleasure that would get an envelope arriving from Obama. So, but it says yet Emmanuel, like everyone else, gets it wrong. Ed McMahon never worked for Publishers Clearinghouse. <gasps> oh, okay. Well, maybe he volunteered. But he did. He was a spokesman for something called American Family Publishers. Well, that which, sounds the same. <laughs> it's similarly boring name. Yeah. Similarly, and listen. Quote, American Family Publishers was set up to directly compete with us, says Publishers Clearinghouse's Todd Sloan. They were always a Me Too company. We ran TV commercials. They were going there with TV ads. <laughs> they would do everything we did. So during the 80s, there was a tremendous amount of TV advertising. People get these ads mixed up. They thought we were one in the same. At the time, Publishers Clearinghouse didn't really make any real effort to correct the misconception. It was kind of a blessing. It was free advertising since people thought McMahon was working for us, said Sloan. It certainly didn't hurt us, and as a result, the association between McMahon and Publishers Clearinghouse became an enduring myth. It was the combination of the well-established company and the well-established spokesperson, says Sloan. I don't understand that, how... It, oh, it's it said that Ed McMahon previously worked for a knockoff company of it, and I don't really get it. A lot, but a lot of people call BS <laughs> on this. They but said they Me were... Too company, so that was even funnier. What with the current climate, uh, <laughs> I thought <laughs> yeah. that was pretty funny. But yeah. no, this, I mean, I get it. I, it it makes sense in retrospect, but I still that's still really weird because I it's... remember. It's I guess I'm remembering wrong. It re- it's referenced so much in pop culture. Uh, Ed McMahon would appear on all, with giant checks, going to people's doors on all kind of big shows. Roseanne had a scene where Ed McMahon himself showed up with a giant check. Sabrina mm-hmm. the Teenage Witch, Ed McMahon showed up with a giant check. Who's the boss? Ed McMahon showed up with a giant check. Boy Meets World, Ed McMahon shows up with a <laughs> giant check, but he never did that. <laughs> Is there ever. another never one? Was. Do you have one more? Uh, not one where he showed up with a check, but oh. something I discovered <laughs> last week. Okay, I was I was watching that show, The Goldbergs. I've never seen it before. I watched an episode because I wasn't feeling well. I didn't feel like changing the channel. And they <laughs> made that show is set in the '80s, from what I could uh, I could tell. One of the characters uh, talks about them not having money and goes, "Oh, well, maybe Ed McMahon will show up one day." She made a, a reference to Ed McMahon showing up with a check, uh, and. I, it just hit me. I was like, because I've read about this recently. I'm like, there was an example right there. People were remembering Ed McMahon with a check, but he never had one. Weird. But I guess maybe she was talking about family, 
whatever publishers. What was the name of that other one? The knockoff? The Me Too company? American Family Publishers. That seems so made up. It's like okay. I've never heard of that fucking company in my life. So I want to talk about I want to talk about like how this could be happening. But before we get to that, I just want to say that there are many, many that we have not mentioned today. Uh, Kurt Cobain and the the fuzzy pink sweater that oh, ever, or man. jacket that, that never that existed. That one just popped up, didn't it? Yeah, that one's popping up. No one understands that that never existed. Him in a mm. in a pink, pink like feathery kind of jacket. Uh, the lion and the lamb from the Bible. That that's a line that never happens. It's the the wolf may lay with the lamb, and it's supposedly always been that. But every day, I don't know. I, it, again, I I can't read. Gets so I, wrong for some reason. So that was a whole thing. Like, what part of scripture was that? Like, I went to Catholic. Look, I'm school showing you right here. Supposedly, here's one: the, la- the, lamb the lamb and the lion will lie down together. Isaiah 11:16. But it's never actually been that line. But as you can see, I've seen it in all kind of art and iconography the lamb and the lion. Mm-hmm. It's you know. It's something. Well, we Look, know the Bible is fairly question. Wrong. The lion shall lay down with this animal, and it, it was the lamb. Here's here's a poster. I think this is from It's Always Sunny. But look, it's a trust <laughs> poster in the back. All right, and see, there's a trust poster, and it's a lion and a lamb together. You know, kind <laughs> of. And and what did you say it actually was? It's the, the wolf will lay down with the, the lamb. The wolf. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't make sense. No, it I doesn't. I don't understand that one. Um, another one, Pikachu. Some people think Pikachu always had a black tail. Uh, you guys, no. would be, be, he never did. Good. Then you're no. You're you're in line with current Pikachu. He never Who had a black tip on his tail. A black tail. Get the fuck. Out. No, 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 no. Oh, a tip. A tip. Yes, it, it faded. Okay. It was like gradient. All right. I'm showing y'all an image now. This is from one of everyone's favorite cartoons, the Flintstones. Is this correct? Is it this spelling? F L I N S T O N E S. Flintstones. No. Russ, I would like Not, to say that is incorrect. It's the Flint Stones, right? Flint Stones, yes. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're definitely right about that. Oh, and um, one of the ones we brought up in our own episode when we talked about Jane Goodall with uh, Christo, the man who sees oh, you. Yeah. First, he brought up Jane Goodall, and um, he was talking about her and her work with gorillas, but it's evidently always been chimps. Not gorillas. But I, I remember as being chimpanzees. That's what I always but, thought. Yeah, but he remembered as gorillas, and he even referenced That's gorillas so in the weird. mist movie. Right. It's a weird one. And um, I you know, just why is this really happening? You know, why is that, why is evidently our world is changing and something? What is causing it? So a lot of the big theories about what is causing it. Some people think it's CERN, and that when the Large Hadron Collider was activated in uh, what on September tenth, two thousand eight. That that somehow like opened up this wormhole and just started changing everything. What do you guys think about that? I think I mean that's some kind of a huge event that I can see some weird side effects happening, and that would explain the whole. Because my whole question was why, thinking that it was people behind it. But if it's just a weird science thing behind it, I might be willing to accept it, but uh, I still don't like it. Yeah, another thing, another theory is that 2012 and the end of the Mayan calendar that things actually did end and that we uh we it just ended up in some or things were ended, allowed to enter our dimension or our dimension changed or maybe things did happen. Maybe we were all dead. Things maybe this, got wacky. Right? Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe we are in some weird simulated afterlife or one of the theories I really like a lot, and I, I I would love to be plausible, is that this is just the butterfly butterfly effect uh, by time travelers. That time travel has happened. That what we've always heard of that subtle changes would happen to our world. That these are actually happening now, and that we are seeing them happen. And we are remembering certain things that somebody may have traveled back in time and made a small change to something that led to now we go to chick chicken filet and now in a week from now we don't know what the I thing can is see, i can see that kind of being a thing but i think it would be really weird that they would be changes that were that subtle and nothing else you know wouldn't there be some some kind of bigger ripple than maybe that? there maybe the bigger ripples aren't something that you would misremember because it's something that would they were they were bigger things were things that would be happening oh in our like definitely shook up so they get right. yeah like maybe like maybe things. maybe some random celebrity becomes the president of the united states or something crazy oh like that, that would right? be terrible oh i really hope that that doesn't happen <laughs> see that's why i don't like this topic because it opens up all these terrifying possibilities that should never happen not my timeline losers <laughs> um, <laughs> 
a theory that is a little bit more off the wall, and therefore I like it a lot, is that uh, that this all has to do with 9-11, and that this is a simulation, and that when 9-11 happened, that was kind of a wake-up, a big flashpoint where we, if you want to think of the movie The Matrix, where we kind of awoke and think about the things that happened afterwards, we kind of 